This happened some months ago. I was playing a new campaign. The party was fun in the beginning. We had a druid, a knight, a ranger, and I think a mage, a sorcerer, doesn't really matter. Anyway, I was an elven cleric. A little annoying personality-wise, but for reasons, a little bit of context is going to be important. In Tormenta 20, the elven kingdom was completely destroyed by goblinoids, making, in essence, every elf godless. Their goddess failed to protect them, so they stopped following her. I was playing a refugee who was really traumatized, so I tried to show that in my character, and it really worked. Me and my clearin... clearin? A clearin ranger friend, which is basically a child of a human and gnome, which means they're skinny and frail and have funny ears. Which means they're like me, except I have a funny neck. But you do have a long neck. <laughs> and that's it. We were really close, me and this killerin friend, and the party was fine until a guy who I'll just call Mike entered the party. The thing is, it was all good until he started to literally cheat in the game. Like on sats, on everything. The DM had to take his sheet and change everything that wasn't in the rules. Anyway, in-game, he was really bad at role-playing, which would be okay, but he was actually mad at us for doing any role-playing. I got really annoyed by the fact that my character was a cleric, what, in his opinion, made my character useless. You guys crap on healers, but then you idiots get your hand cut off. <laughs> See, that's when you come begging, and I think more healers need to be comfortable saying no. We're charging healthcare at least. We ended the campaign without many issues since the DM got the rules really clear to that Mike guy who, by the way, was playing a half-demon warlock with a really edgy personality and an AI pick to describe his character while everyone else drew or had comms. After the last session, we were talking about what would happen if this campaign turned into a series or something, and the Mike guy turned to me and said, pretty sure your character would have a women-only fan base. Only they are interested in useless characters with good looks. <laughs> because men never pay attention to the appearance of a character. Never! <laughs> you are ugly anyway! <sighs> I've been rejected again. Women these days, they only care about shallow qualities. Like, if you're a hot, sexy, six-foot man. Six foot no! No! I must resist! I must not give in to the female way of thinking. We men, we care about deeper things than your surface level appearance. We care about- Oh! A sequel to Ghost of Tsushima! A few moments later... This is trash! There's a woman, and she does not meet my beauty standards! I cannot see her boo! This took me totally off guard. I wasn't expecting a comment like that. First, because my character healed a lot throughout the entire campaign. I took the useless part pretty seriously, and the misogyny? Dude, I simply didn't respond. I was just flabbergasted. The DM stood up and said it wasn't cool to say that about another person's character. And the only character that was useless was Mike, since he wasn't useful against anything unless he could kill them in one or two hits. We had a small discussion about Mike's behavior, he was banned from future tables. That's for the best. And also, all the dudes out there, list your favorite support characters. Y'all know I love some Shadowheart here, but I want to hear what you guys like. So I want to tell you the story that I told many times to my friends that actually impacted my life in a bad way. It happened years ago, so I don't remember all the details. I'm a trans girl, and it was when I still wasn't aware and just thought, I just like playing as girls, as I usually chose to play girl characters in video games. Same, but like, I just like pretending to be cute. I wanted to play a tabletop role-playing game and to play a girl character, obviously, and the opportunity came by. There was a tabletop role-playing game event in a pub I was often going to. I don't remember how I ended up with these people, but I didn't know the DM before. I also didn't know most of the players. It was supposed to be played in a system and setting created by the Dungeon Master. First strange thing, no character sheets. Okay, it was my first time, the others too. It was supposed to be a one-shot for newbies, so yeah, I didn't really pay attention or just didn't say anything when I said I wanted to play as a girl. We didn't focus on backstories, we were just simple people in a fantasy world. No weapons, no powers, no nothing. We were supposed to start from scratch, which was strange since it was supposed to be a one-shot for newbies. 
Basically, the whole session was pure chaos, and there wasn't much worth remembering, but I do remember this. When we began, some kind of cataclysm struck our city, the one our characters were living in, and I had no idea what happened, but my character was naked in the rubble. I get it, man. The apocalypse happening while I'm taking a shower is actually one of my greatest fears. Maybe he wanted for us to start from zero, so I guess we're starting naked. It feels like it could be a thing. Then, when he described the scene, he started talking about my character as if she was a boy. It went something like, Hey, but my character's a girl. No. I was baffled by that response. Yeah, I could have created my character as a guy, but I wanted to play a girl. No, if you're saying so, then your character says that he is a girl, and everyone around him laughs because they see a man. Darn. After all, he just wanted to humiliate us, huh? But then, I thought that's normal. I thought I just couldn't play girl characters in tabletop role-playing games, which which means I'm in trouble, bro. <laughs> I'm in big trouble. I guess my characters were supposed to be the gender I was perceived as. Now, when I realize I was never a boy to begin with, I see that it was something that made me stay in the closet for longer than I could have been otherwise. I just remember that nothing in particular happened in this session, and no one wanted to play again, but I wanted to play a tabletop role-playing game so much, I actually said that I want to play with this DM again. I'm just glad it didn't happen after all. Now, I play often, I love creating characters, coming up with their backstories, and I'm free to play as girls, but I hear sometimes about DMs who don't allow people to play characters of different genders. By my right as Dungeon Master, I declare a new law. All characters must be played by people of the same gender on penalty of execution by axe. Uh, sorry, sir. I have a, I have a question. What? What's the problem? Yeah, it, it's about your your homebrew world. I mean, like, I just wanted to ask. Oh my god, I've been dying for someone to finally ask me about my homebrew world. Oh my god, I have like a thousand words of lore written down. Like, you need to read like all of it. It's so much. Oh god. Uh, maybe uh, another time. Look, are there any women in this world? I mean, yeah, someone has to populate the brothels. I mean, oh okay, I really don't need to know about that. But like, who plays the women? I mean, I do love getting to describe their many actions. Okay, and... so like you play the women? What? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, DM, but wait, wait. I... I'm currently playing in a campaign in which one person who is presenting as a girl plays a masculine dragonborn. And other players often misgender this character because of that. But when it comes to me, I'm safe. The same group didn't realize I was trans too. It just came up when I started joking with someone about trans stuff. Sometimes I play NB characters, but I can't and don't really want to escape the femme presenting part and don't usually care about pronouns too, so it's fine. This is my RPG horror story. It's just so strange. It did hurt so much back then, but, but it was in an unrealized way as I didn't realize who I really was. I wish you have a good day. Look, there are absolutely people who play characters of other genders in a weird way. Does that mean that it should be banned for all time? No. I mean, come on. When you are the game master, you are obviously going to eventually play characters of different genders. As I joked about earlier, I play as a lot of women. Why? I honestly couldn't tell you. It's not like I don't ever like playing as guys. I definitely have favorite guy characters. They just aren't the majority for some reason. I would be pissed off as hell if someone told me I couldn't play as Yumi or Kalia because I am perceived as a guy. Also, you are completely valid when you point out that this can really mess up someone's journey through their gender stuff. I mean, that's already a hard journey to make, and let me make this clear. Your friends are not your therapist when you're going through that journey. It's not their responsibility to pick you up through it. But, they should also try not to hinder you actively. And letting you play as a chick every now and then, come on. That's not that big of a deal, man. I'm still looking for a new game to play, but every game feels like it takes so much for me to get into. Money and time. They are something I do not have. I'm looking for something easier to get into for my table. Thank God I found Tales of Fablecraft. Today's video is sponsored by Tales of Fablecraft, an easy to pick up and play in person or remote tabletop role-playing experience on your desktop on Steam or on your little phone. 
Look, some of us are looking for new TTRPGs to play, but a lot of them require a good amount of cash. But Tales of Fablecraft is free to play. You don't need books, you don't need to wait for shipping, it's right there on your virtual tabletop with integrated video, audio, and text chat with cross-play and cross-platform compatibility. Despite being easy to pick up, the game is fun as hell to play and has an extensive homebrew platform, so if you have anything you want to add, it's easy enough. On top of that, it's simply gorgeous. You know we love a good aesthetic here, and there is so much amazing artwork. A lot of it is animated too, bringing the vibrant and hopeful world of Mythos to life. Oh, and if you want immersive battle maps, interactive music, and combat VFX, you don't need to add it yourself. It's already there and ready to use. If you guys are interested, then you can head down into the description down below or to the pinned comment where you can get Tales of Fablecraft. Incredibly easy to play and free to play. Thank you so much to Tales of Fablecraft for sponsoring today's video. As always, supporting our sponsors does support us. And without further ado, I'm going to turn into an animated rat so that we can get back to the video. I did not understand how these horror stories are submitted, but I think it's like this. I've always been interested in D&D since my younger days in middle school. However, I never knew where to look for a game at that age. And when I finally did figure it out, I already had a solid group of friends who had played the game and made various stories with it. However, we only played anime-based campaigns since we all loved it. One hosted by me, which was less D&D &D and more like a Yu-Gi-Oh campaign, where people play Yu-Gi-Oh and they have a few stats they use to interact with the world. But which world? Is it the world of Yu-Gi-Oh the original? Is it the world of Yu-Gi-Oh GX? Is it 5Ds, which is the best one? Come at me, alright? It wasn't the best setup, but... It did last so far as 55 sessions, so I'm happy that my players quite liked the game I created. And now we're doing a One Piece game that has six sessions so far and it's been tons of fun. We're even recording it, posting it online. But as fun as those experiences are, I always wanted to play a plain old, normal, fancy D&D game. So one of my mates from university, let's call him Jason, hits my phone. <laughs> and he is also a fan of D&D. He is also a fan of D&D, but we never got to play together since we're from different groups. But he knew how much I wanted to play a standard D&D game, so he sent a message saying that he was gonna have to drop out of a D&D game that he was playing on. He asked if I wanted to sub in for him. I quickly agreed, and he sent me the link to the server where the game was hosted. He presented me to the dungeon master, and she was a nice lady, and offered a quick little interview with me on Tuesday evening. I said I could make it, and I was excited. I had about two days to ponder my character concept. So I came up with maybe what was a bad idea for a first time character, but I really liked it. I decided to give it a go anyway. My character's name was Magnus, and he was supposed to be a 500 year old dampier, my friends told me it was a vampire, who hated everything and everyone, especially himself. But although he had a poor attitude towards people, he was helpful in understanding. He wouldn't step on people's toes because, in the end, he did not want people to step on his. So, like, he's giving a star in, but less sexy. Just turn the sexiness down. <laughs> That's okay. The whole twist was that it's incredibly hard to take him seriously because he was turned into a vampire when he was 11 after surviving a vampire attack. I don't know if I'm the weird one for wanting to play a character like that. Okay, seriously, turn down the sexiness, like, all the way. All the way, alright? I, I, no implication! Yeah, I thought it was a fun and funny concept that people could laugh at and maybe see a bit of tragedy in. Anywho, the interview comes. I go at it after I confirm a few things about my player character with my friends before joining the call. And when I do join, it's me, the DM, and two players. We list them as Ali and Bob. So the interview begins fine. They ask me a few questions, like how experienced I was with the game, have I ever run a game before, did I have availability, join sessions, and all that until the DM asked if I had a character ready. I told her yes and sent her Magnus's character sheet. She opened it and looked at it and she asked me the question almost immediately, oh, is your character male? And then I quickly replied, uh, yes, they are, is there a problem? And then she informs me that this game had a rule where every player character needed to be female, something my friend never told me about. And when I went to check the channel with all the player characters' faces, I did see that all of them were indeed girls. 
I thought it was an odd rule, it wasn't a problem for me, I could just switch back to cisgender for the game, but I asked her why, and she just answered, it makes me more comfortable. I did not really get it, but I don't want to push it, so I just left it there. I was gonna say I could switch Magnus's gender or just make a new character, but before I could, she then hits me with, but I think I can make an exception in your case. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no! Now I'm confused. I ask her why, and the DM says, I just really like what you did here. I heard players Ali and Bob also complimenting the character, telling me it'll be fun as an addition to their group, and I was really happy, bro, no, bro, stop. I was happy I could come up with something that they liked, however my sweet moment of accomplishment came crashing down when player Ali, a girl, suddenly asked me, so what's his type of woman? I never felt words leave my mouth so fast because I was so shocked by the question and I thought I misheard it and asked for her to say that again. And when Ali asked me in more detail, more clearly, what type of women is he into? If he has lived for so long, I wonder what type of girl would satisfy his thirst. I am disturbed. I'm even more disturbed that DM and player Bob are both quiet. Looking back on it, I should have left as soon as I could, but I didn't. And I, as politely as I could, stated to Player Alley that Magnus' body is that of an 11-year-old. But then, Player Bobby said, Yeah, but he is older than everyone, even our elf. This is insanity. I could not believe my ears. I felt really creeped out by this. I then simply said that Magnus does not like people. And if he really had to identify with his sexuality, he was asexual, wanted nothing to do with people, but maybe the exception of their money, so he could keep living in isolation. Then player Ali casually commented, not for long, which that kind of broke me. I excused myself to the DM and she told me that I was good to come to the session. But lucky for me, I left the server and blocked them because I don't want to be anywhere near any of those people. Safe to say, I have a lot of questions for my buddy and I think I will just keep to my anime based games with my close group of friends. I hope I get to play with Max one day, especially with a group of non-creepos. Anyway, thank you for reading and have a good day. I hope you have a pleasant day as well. Oh my god, that was unpleasant. I will say that we often recommend people don't play as child characters, but mainly just for suspension of disbelief reasons. I've never been a fan of young characters, especially in dark fantasy. Like, I wish, for example, that George R. R. Martin kept his time jump idea for A Song of Ice and Fire so he could age up the characters to more realistic ages. I don't know why, but even in fantasy, it bothers me for some reason. But that's a silly personal thing. And honestly, Playing a young character could be just fine. As NPCs, I have plenty of young characters, but when people make it weird, that's the problem. It goes for double when a character also is asexual. People not respecting the orientations of characters, I mean, ugh, I don't even like when people change sexualities of like video game NPCs. There, I can deal. With this though, yeah, no, it's creepy. Hey, one of the stories you read a few months ago about a druid freaking out when a party member told a white lie to a grieving widow reminded me of this story. This was supposed to be short, but it got a bit long. The story happened a few years ago when I was in a game with a close friend and some new people. DM is one of my best friends to this day, and he let me know a lot behind the scenes of this train wreck as it happened. Anyway, he and I are the only people who knew each other in the game, as the others were recruited from a discord that we happen to be in. The major players in the story are me, I play as a fighter, DM, bard, ranger, and our problem player, the wizard. Wizard was a great writer and wrote this amazing backstory for her character, but we would soon find out that she was a little overattached to her character in the I am the character, she is me kind of way. And she also treated people like they were their characters, which didn't really turn out too well. See, the wizard's character started romancing Bard. She was actually in a love triangle with Bard and Ranger. Ranger and wizard's characters hated each other because wizard was lawful as hell and Ranger's backstory includes smuggling people across the border to reunite families split up by a recent war. They were both good aligned, but wizard believed in the letter of the law and that means that they're not good aligned, man. I would say lawful good is like Aang. You know? I know that chaos is not the way, but I will also not condemn you to horrors. 
I see your courage. And I accept it gladly. But then you have lawful, freaking annoying dipshit. Oh my gosh, you can't run from me! I saw you steal a single potato to feed your family, and now I will hunt you down to the ends of the earth! We also had some owl character problems, where Wizard was messaging our bard and crap-talking Ranger between sessions. Bard thought he could cool the air by having his character pick Wizard over Ranger. That's not gonna work. However, Wizard started acting like she and Bard, the player, were dating, which made Bard uncomfy. Nobody knew this or about the secret messages though, because Bard didn't tell anyone until after the big blow up. Bard went to DM and asked to leave the campaign and DM arranged for a dramatic character death as an exit for his character. Basically, Bard's character was poisoned by a trap, but didn't tell anyone about it until it was too late. At this point, the party was too low on resources to do anything, and he tragically died of his wounds. No one's got to cure wounds? You're a ranger! It's in your spell list! At this point, the party was too low on resources to do anything about it, and he died tragically of his wounds. The problem? He lied to Wizard's character about being wounded. As soon as the death happened, Wizard started throwing a fit about how Bard's character abused her character. I imagine... You're confused, as were we. See, Wizard considers any lying in this relationship to be just abuse. We all knew that Bard was leaving. It was just the in-character lying. We were all a little taken aback. Ranger tried to explain that this wasn't really abuse. It was just, it was just lying. But Wizard was having none of it and started calling Ranger a victim blamer and demanding the DM throw her from the game. I just watched this happen. The DM tried to make them talk it out above table before shutting Wizard down, which made Wizard think he was sliding in with her. She kept saying the ranger had to apologize, so I lose my temper and say that the only thing wrong is Wizard, who then probably loses her crap. It was pandemonium in this video call. Somehow, the DM managed to calm Wizard and Ranger, calm them down long enough to continue the campaign and wrap it up just as quickly as possible. I found out later that the reason DM did not kick Wizard was because she threatened to report us to the person who ran the server we were all a part of. She would get us banned if she was kicked. I imagine a report of how her character was the victim of, you know, words, and how we all made fun of her for it would make us look pretty bad. DM didn't want this leaking onto all of us. I understand where it was coming from since DM was young and never ran this kind of player before, but Wizard should have been kicked. Wizard later wrote an epilogue about how it took her character years, but slowly she recovered from the scars of her relationship with the bard. Yeah, no real happy ending here. Wizard went on thinking she was right and probably to this day remembers us as a bunch of victim blamers. Well, that sucks. Trust me, I've heard some terrible stories about victim blaming and abuse, and those things, they're real. And they happen a lot, unfortunately, but I mean, come on, man. This ain't an example of it. Some people just... They really want to get their way, and they will use whatever language they have to to do it. I think therapy is a great thing, but people have been using therapy talk as a way to manipulate others into getting what they want. I saw Arcadum doing this when he was trying to come back into the limelight, and if you don't know who he is, good for you. I do think that the way the ranger tried to exit was silly, but... I mean, come on, that's nothing compared to what the wizard's pulling off. I do respect Ranger for thinking that he's gotta get out of here, man, because whatever the wizard was doing behind the scenes, it was not good. <laughs>I, 28, he, him, am a forever dungeon master, but I do occasionally join short campaigns, especially when I feel early warning signs burnout. I got one such opportunity many moons ago when a co-worker from my then day job found out I DM'd 5th edition and expressed frustration that he constantly had players leaving his campaign. Oh god. I know he played as my now wife, 27 she day, was in his campaign and kept asking for advice on mechanics, but I tend to keep work and nerds separate. His work schedule worked with mine, so I joined as a player consultant, keeping notes on things for my co-worker to improve on. The first few sessions were shockingly bad, with a laundry list of rookie DM red flags. It was pretty obvious he had tried to run before learning to walk, with completely unbalanced encounters. 
obvious railroads. It's fine to have a plot, but don't yell the correct answer to an obstacle the moment your players start veering to an alternative solution. He didn't understand spells at all. A fighter player character had been singled out and been turned into the main character, which we found he was becoming increasingly uncomfortable about, including having proficiency in all skills and saving throws, a 5x multiplier on proficiency, instant transmission from Dragon Ball Z. What's instant transmission? Oh, it's teleportation. Yeah. Why? <laughs> he had true sight and a direct mental link to his father, the Christian God, giving unlimited wishes and divine intervention at level four. And the main horror... Wait, wait, can we, can we link back to him having instant God transmissions? I have devoted my entire life to piety and holiness. I have sworn myself to follow the teachings of my god and- Come on, dad. Pick up. I don't even call you that much. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? What, what? Oh, I'm just- I'm just calling god, you know. Um, I was hoping to walk on water. I didn't want to get this brand new suit wet, so- Why do you get to talk to the man upstairs so easily? I've devoted my entire life to this crap and you just get to call him? I mean, you know, he, he's my dad. Special privileges, man. Ugh, Jesus. I think that's just cheating. Romans! Get him! Shit! Judas, I knew I couldn't- Oh, uh, sorry, language. That's, that's, that's my bad. Sorry, that's... <sighs> yeah, anyway, the main horror was the DMPCs. Between my own notes and having mini session zero is basically sitting each player down with me and the DM to go over goals, expectations, and any general feedback, then having another formal session zero with everyone else, several issues were resolved, but not all of them. As the general gameplay and plot structure improved, it became increasingly apparent the DM was not willing to nerf or downplay those darn DMPCs. They were the number one issue all the players brought up. They were absurdly overpowered, but they were his sacred cow, and he was willing to die on that hill. They consisted of his self-insert, as well as two female characters who would always come back to him. One of the women was particularly, let's say, aggressive, I would always leave one survivor of any encounter, humanoid or otherwise, and drag them away from the party not to be disturbed until morning, because they're getting tea. They're getting tea and no one can convince me otherwise! It weirded out two-thirds of the party who asked DM to stop or tone it down, but they ended up compromising to at least having him keep it subtle and away from party business. We took it to be him morally graying the world, a stated goal of his, and the two party members who said it was fine seemed to laugh about it, and they were the two who lasted the longest at this table. I felt a bit like, since I was mostly there to smooth bumps, it wasn't really my place to give ultimatums about changing the tone at the table. Then, many sessions later, the two who were uncomfortable besides my wife and I left and blocked the DM. The first session without them, when we finished adventuring day and found a tavern. The DM asked me and my wife to make a constitution saving throw after taking our first sips of our drinks. We both failed despite rolling high. A drug kicks in our vision fogs. I kind of assumed the DM was doing it for something plot related, and we'd seen former foes come out from hiding or something. Instead, the DM tells us that his aggressive DMPC is the one who drugged us, then gleefully narrates the events as we're dragged up to her room for tea. Now, we would both made it very clear that this explicit non-con content was completely off the table for us. After the DM ignored us telling him above table to cut it out, we just packed and left. We don't tend to tell people, but we'd been the victims of shockingly similar situations in real life, and we were shocked to have it thrown in our faces like that. The next time I ran to the DM at work, which was unavoidable, he acted as if nothing happened, nothing was wrong. I asked him to set aside time at lunch to just talk about what happened last session. When we met, I told him what had gone wrong and told him we would not be continuing. He laughed at me, laughed me off, saying stuff like, but she's hot, you must have liked it on some level, and the drugs were so you could sit back and enjoy what happened, fail flex checks over and over, it's not like you're stronger than she is. <coughs> oh god, I'm good. Seriously, you're heaving over a horror story? Dude, you try reading this crap. Alright, let me see this crap. Oh, oh god. Uh, uh, crispy number, crispy number three. Uh, what, what are you doing with that knife? Uh, 
There's only one way. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Uh, guys, crispy number three is ripping his eyes. Oh, oh, okay. I'm just gonna go back to work. Somehow, I left the conversation feeling more out of control than before. After the last session, he got mad at me for not showing up, saying I was acting like the others. I told him he'd cross my line, and if he hadn't, I would have been happy to continue playing. I wasn't trying to leave without warning, I just didn't feel safe at a table with him, DMing. I asked if similar things had happened, you know, with the other players who had ghosted him, and he seemed to honestly not know the answer. He never stopped asking me to rejoin the campaign. And here are some bonus gems. After I left, his campaign grew from a party of six, plus three DMPCs, to two parties of 15. Just thought I'd twist the knife for you. I let him join the campaign I was running as a temporary guest to see if he was calmer as a player. He chose to play- wait, hold on, bro. You let him join as a player after this? Come on! He played a lawful good cleric and proceeded to get kicked out part way through the campaign when he murdered a commoner in cold blood in an attempt to extort the town's mayor. He then asked to roll athletics to give a grape to the wife of the mayor. <laughs> DMPC that gave the grape juice to me became ascendant to the goddess of good in his world. I told the story of what happened to a player in the party, and when she heard about the ascension, she recognized the name and told the story to her whole table. Having a messed up grape juice drinker in your world is rough, but maybe seen as morally gray aggression. Trying to convince people that someone like that is the most good woman on the plane? That ain't gonna sell. After that party left, the DM constantly joked about drugging me with chloroform. <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry for the long and rambly rant. Feel free to trim. TLDR, Lifetime DM, joins a campaign to figure out why players were jumping ship, learns the hard way, and becomes one of those players. Disaster DM remains in denial. That is something common. Some people have a really hard time realizing that they're the ones causing their own problems. And yeah, this DM is, well, he's a bit rough. I will say that I now officially believe that way too many of these people exist. And some of them have quite famous stories, so yeah, that's just depressing. But in any case, at least those stories are read with the consent of everybody reading. Here, we have a DM who is forcing this kind of story onto people who don't want it. And you and your wife did the right thing. Pack up, leave. There's no way you should stick around for that kind of thing. I'm seeing this as a theme in a lot of these stories. When you see something bad, you leave. Good. It's also very honorable that you try to help this guy with their DMing, but I think some of these problems go beyond new DMing syndrome. I mean, come on. The instant transmission with God? That's insanity beyond what we usually see here at the tavern. And that? That's saying something to say the least. Hey, that's a wrap. I'm back from my break. I'm recharged and I'm ready to go. If you guys enjoyed, then you might enjoy our last big episode of RPG Horror Stories. Lots of fun gay energy there. It's linked in the cards. But before you go, please do leave a like on this one and subscribe to Crispy's Tavern so you don't miss any of our content as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down in the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment asexual and a kid to let me know you made it to the end of the video. Hey, by the way, if you have your own horror stories, you can send them directly to us. There's an email down in the description down below. Send your stories our way for a chance to be featured in one of these videos. But hey, even if you don't have any stories, in essence, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Farewell. By my right as Dungeon Master. That was actually a super sharp knife, so like,